Hello, I'm Mona Cha from Adam Road Presbyterian Church. We're proud to bring to you from our culinary arts ministry yet another animal recipe. Some of you have followed us and you've made animal shaped mooncakes, you've made animal shaped shoe pastry, you've even made animal shaped tarts. And now we're going to show you how to make an animal shaped cookie. And better still, no bakings involved. It's like eating Play Doh. Really? Well, let Suzanne Ng, our celebrated baker, and her family show us how fun it is to do this. You may want to do it during the school holidays, especially when it's raining outside. Well, let's see what we have in store. Do write to us if you have uh, you want a recipe or you have any questions about um, our ministry or about the talk that you will be hearing from Geraldine Pham. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne. I'm one of the teachers from the Culinary Arts Ministry. I'm a homemaker and also teach baking professionally. And these are my daughters, Christine and Carissa. <laughs> Mommy, what are we going to make today? We are going to make this cute and easy no-bake animal cookies. So cute! Yeah! That sounds fun. What ingredients will we need? Okay, so today we will be needing 2 tablespoons of unsalted butter, 3 tablespoons of honey, 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract, and this will be one and a half cups of oat flour. So, oat flour looks like this. Okay, so you can get this uh, from the from baking stores or from the health food section of uh, supermarkets. Okay, and these uh, oat flour they are already ready to eat. If you cannot buy oat flour, you can also blend oats into fine powder using a food processor. And we'll also be needing quarter teaspoon of salt and also uh, 40 grams or one fifth cup of brown sugar okay just to show you how the packet of brown sugar looks like okay you can find them easily in the supermarket stores and for decoration we'll also be needing some uh, chocolate chips okay and yeah, we'll also be needing white chocolate chips and also uh, you can also use chocolate rice sprinkles for the eyes Mm. And lastly, these two are optional. Uh, heart shaped sprinkles for the bowl and also for the eyes. Some pearls. Okay, so are you excited? Yeah. Do you want to get started? Yeah. Okay, let's get started. So, first of all, for the dry ingredients, you will be adding the salt to the oat flour. Would you like to mix for me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can share and mix. Okay, just mix well will do. Is it done yet? Uh, yeah, I think just this one just a rough mix will do. Okay, okay the oat flour looks kind of sandy. Ooh. And then next we'll be combining the butter and the vanilla with the honey. Ooh. Okay. So you want to melt this either in the microwave or stove. And we'll let it uh, melt and boil for about one minute. So we'll be using the microwave today. Okay. <laughs> okay. How long do we have to put it in the microwave? One minute. Okay. Okay. sure that it's well mixed. Okay? It looks nice. Okay, and then now we will pour this over here. Okay, carefully it's hot also, uh, so mommy handle, okay? We will pour the wet ingredients over oh. the oat flour and salt. And then we mix? Yeah, and then we mix. Okay, let me use my spatula to make sure everything is scrapped clean. 
Be gentle, okay? Because it's a bit warm now. Can I mix? Yeah, you can. Can you mix the rest for now? Okay. Mm. So we just mix it all up. Mm -hmm. I do if there's still powder. We will mix until there's no powder and the dough forms. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So you might want to use the spatula to scrap the sides mm -hmm. as well. Sure and the spoon. Yeah, it will come. It will come together and it form a dough. Nice. Can you continue to this? mix? Okay. Okay. When it starts to form a dough, right? You can actually wear gloves and use your hands. Yay! That fun. Mhm. Hey, I wanna continue the. Can we start using our hands yet? Yeah, you can. Once it starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl, you can start to use your hands. So, you can wear gloves. Okay, so we can actually start to use our gloves. Yeah. So by now, right, the dough is really not so hot to touch. We can actually start to use our hands. Okay. Yeah, it feels quite hot though. It's messy. It looks like the hot Yeah. So we don't use our hands when it's super hot, but after it's cooled a bit to not so hot, we can use our hands to gather into a dough. Wow. Okay, just let me do it. Huh? See how I'm gathering up all the flour? Mm -hmm. yeah. Starting with all the dough. So this mixture, right, if it's too dry, you can actually add a few drops of water. And if it's too wet, you can actually add a bit of sprinkle of uh, oat flour. Okay. okay. So once the dough has slightly cooled, we will add in the brown sugar. And then again, we will gather it together and make sure that it's well mixed. Okay. Okay, so just make sure that you it's well mixed, you rub in the brown sugar. Okay. The reason why we add in the brown sugar uh, after it has cooked is so that the, the heat doesn't melt the brown sugar as the brown sugar will add some crunch onto Crunchy. the cookie dough. Hmm. Okay. What do I do if the dough is falling apart? Uh, it will come together with the heat of your hands. Oh. Yeah, because it has some butter inside. Okay, shall I let mommy do? Uh, okay. Gather it into the dough faster, okay? So remember to add in the brown sugar when the dough has cooked to about body temperature. 40 degrees. Yeah. Celsius. Mm -hmm. What's 40 temperature? Mommy, what's 40 temperature? 40 Celsius. Yeah, body temperature is 37, 40. Oops. Oops. It's getting so crummy. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that it comes together. Okay, so we have the dough like this. Okay, and now we'll divide into 20 gram balls. Okay. Okay. So we'll make 12 20 gram balls. Okay, do you remember how to weigh into, into balls? Yes. Yeah, okay, so you weigh 20 grams and then you tear it in between each time. Which button is yeah. uh, This button is tear. This one. Yeah. Okay, 20 grams. Okay. So once you weigh 20 grams, you will roll into a ball. Okay. So each ball will make the bare head. Okay, you can pass the Carissa to roll as well, mommy will help so that it's faster. Okay, you are away, then mommy will roll the balls, okay? Yeah. Mm. Hi everyone, my name is Geraldine. I am one of the pastoral associates in ARPC. And I'm really looking forward to see 
these cute bear cookies. Bears are adorable. Last year, Singapore's famous giant pandas Jia Jia and Kai Kai welcomed their first baby, Le Le. Bears are also found in stories. One of the most famous fairy tales that feature bears is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. We know how the story goes. Goldilocks changes upon an empty house that belongs to three bears. The front door is unlocked, so she enters the house. She eats their porridge, sits on their chairs, and sleeps on their beds. The three bears return home and find their possessions used by a stranger. They find Goldilocks in one of their beds. Goldilocks wakes up in shock and runs out of the house. But what do you think is the lesson of this story? Well, perhaps it is to lock our doors. In Singapore, most of us have the habit to secure our doors even when we are at home. We like to feel safe and secure. We seek security in many areas. We want job and financial security. We want our future to be secure. But pandemics, job losses, economic downturns, internet scams, computer hackers, fake news, climate change and unstable geopolitical relations may cause us to feel uncertain and vulnerable. Unhappy and broken close family relations can also make us grow insecure. So how can we live in a world that has so many insecurities? Well, Jesus tells us how. In the Bible, in Matthew 6, Jesus says this, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. How can we live in a world that has so many insecurities? Matthew chapter 6 offers us three things that we can do. Invest in everlasting treasure. Don't worry, trust God. Seek God first. Firstly, invest in everlasting treasure, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. We are determined to protect the wealth that we have accumulated on earth from devaluation. We want it to grow. So we invest in property, bonds, shares, cryptocurrency, and so on. But this wealth is not everlasting, and it is worthless to us after life. Only the wealth in God's economy will last forever. So what currency does God use? Well, in Galatians 5, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Invest in good character. That will last through life's crisis. God values good character in His people as this is a reflection of who He is. In a world that is turbulent and full of insecurities, 
our good character and wise living can steady us and help us rise above the waves. Leaders with integrity and who truly care for their team members gain respect. Reliable employees who, that have good attitudes are more desirable than those with poor attitudes. But growing in character is hard as we are naturally selfish, prideful and unloving. This investment is a lot more difficult than any monetary investment. We need some supernatural help, which only God can give us. Secondly, trust in your Heavenly Father. To be trustworthy is highly valued. Trustworthy team members take away stress from a project to periods who have our backs and empower us to work confidently. When we trust that our family will always support us, we feel secure. When there is someone who is absolutely trustworthy, he is all-powerful, all-knowing and all-loving. This person tells you that he's got your back, he loves you and he cares for you. Psalms 91 verse 4 He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. This person also says that he will provide for your needs. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? We can trust in God who cares for our well-being. But this is counterintuitive, isn't it? We rather trust ourselves. We value independence and self-reliance. We don't want to depend on others. But we are not all-knowing. We are not in control of everything. Trust in the God who is all-knowing and all-powerful and cares for you. Thirdly, seek God first. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. To seek God's kingdom and His righteousness is to embrace God as King, as top priority in our lives. It is to live with God's love, wisdom and justice wherever we are. That means we seek to uphold godly lives in all areas of our lives. In our families, communities, workplaces, nationally and internationally, we are to look outward and be involved in making this world a safer and more secure place for everyone. Wherever God has placed us, we are to use our talents, skills, knowledge and experience to bless others and to serve. We are to serve those who are at the fringes of society and be involved in reducing climate change. So how can we live in a world that has so many insecurities? Number one, invest in everlasting treasure. Number two, don't worry, trust God. Number three, seek God first. These three things are counterintuitive and countercultural. We would rather invest in tangible things. We worry and trust in ourselves. We seek our own welfare first. We might find it too costly and risky to do what God says. But there is someone who did what God says at the cost of his own life. And this person is Jesus Christ. Before he was arrested and hung on the cross to die, he prayed to God. My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus asked God if it was possible that he did not have to be hung on the cross, but he was willing if God wants him to do it. He was willing to obey God to death. Why did he do that? Well, because he wanted to save us, you and I. Romans 5.19 Through the obedience of the one man, many may be made righteous. Jesus was that one man. Through Jesus we can be righteous and therefore be forgiven of our sins and be reconciled with God. To make our lives more secure, we have to unlock our hearts to God. 
to Jesus. With Jesus in our hearts, we are empowered to invest in good character, to lean on God for all our needs, and to serve others. We can have secure lives that are kept safely under God's care. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we all need security. We all need to feel safe. And thank you that you are our Father in heaven who loves us, who cares for us, who is in control of all things. Help us to trust in you. Help us to seek what is long-lasting. Help us to seek you first, to serve others. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So this reset recipe will make either 12 bare heads or 8 full-bodied animals. Okay? So uh, this one, this is a bear and this one I was trying to make it into a dog. You can make any animal you like, actually. And the leftover we will gather together and then roll into a log. A log? Yeah. So Carissa, if it if it's too dry, you can add a few drips, drops of water. Okay. And the last one, Mummy will roll into a log. Give it to me. Wait a minute. Okay, 13 grams just nice. So just to take note, when we roll our balls, right, and the, the lock, right, we are always very gentle. We are rolling it and not smashing it, okay? Squashing <laughs> it. Okay, so we'll divide into about 16. We divide into half first. Okay. Followed by half. Into half. <laughs> and then further, another half. Okay, so there are 16 now. Caterpillar. Yeah, and then, uh, so each bear here, right, we will take half of the, half of each segment. Okay, let me roll into the two small balls. Okay. In the bare hands and feet, right, we will divide all into small balls. So one of these segments can roll into two balls, okay? Okay. So Carissa, you have to roll into two balls? Yeah, okay. Two balls. Okay, two balls. Okay, so we will make a lot of small balls. You can have different size balls if you want. You can have smaller balls for the feet also. Doesn't need to be precise, it's like play doh. Can I take the balls or can it be other shapes? And so like for the dog the dog's ears, right? Usually I will pinch into a triangle like this. Because dogs have pointy ears. Not all dogs. So you can if cats also have triangle ears, you can for the ears you can have triangle shape. So each bear has two ears, four paws, and tail also if you want, it's optional. Okay, so once we have all the small balls, we we'll are take it accidentally, we can start to assemble our animals. I want this floppy ear. Okay. Okay, so for the assembly, right, Mummy will demonstrate one first, okay, before you do can. So let's assemble a cute animal. Okay, first we will need a body. Body we will slice into half. Okay, we will only use half of the body. Okay, and then we will take a head. Stick to the body like this. Okay, this front. Okay, and then we will take a white chocolate chip for the nose spot and then press it in 
If it doesn't stick, you can just uh, put some liquid, but it should stick quite okay. And for the nose, we will use a brown chocolate chip. So the heat of the hands will help to stick it to the chocolate. Okay. Press it. Okay, and then next we will have the eyeballs. Eyeballs, we will also use chocolate chips. If they are too big, you can just slice them. And then lightly round them with the heat of your hands. If not, you can just buy those black chocolate pearls for the eyes. Okay. And then next, we will add in the ears. As well as the hands and feet. Hands and feet. The feet behind. Remember to press the dough in to the body so that it sticks. Mm -hmm. Lastly, the tail on top. Okay, so we'll add in our optional decorations like the bowl using heart sprinkle. Okay, so we just stick the sprinkles on. Okay. And lastly, we can draw on the mouth using food marker. Okay, so we have our animal. So for the eyes, right, if you want more definition, you can actually add the, those mini white pearls called non pearls. You just stick them onto the eyes. And you also can use chocolate rice for different facial expressions. Okay, so can you tell me what you have made? Okay, that's and nice. I made this dog and cat and otter. So cute, an otter. No, no use. <laughs> okay, how about you, Carissa? What is this animal? I made this cat. Oh, the cat is so cute. I made I made some cute heart ears and one cute pink tongue. Oh, so cute, so creative, huh? And mommy made some bears. So this is really a fun uh, bonding activity for the children and remember after making this right to set it in the fridge for at least 20 minutes before uh, eating them and you can keep them in the fridge uh, airtight for up to 7 days. Hope you enjoyed today's uh, baking and bonding session. Bye bye! Bye bye! Well, you've heard now from Geraldine about our securities or insecurities and you see how easy it is to bake these or no bake cookies. We know that you would have some questions and if you have them, please write to us at cam at arpc.sg. We would love to talk to you more about Jesus and why we have this ministry. We are not asking you to like or subscribe or asking you for money. We just want an opportunity to share with you our love for Jesus Christ. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it.